All right, welcome back in, everyone. We are primed and ready to go for the third place match, the Korean showdown between Happy Joe and Rundong. Joining me for our third place cast will be Atmaz. How's it going, man? Hello, uh, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me cast with you. Yeah, the third place match, we're already there. Um, yeah, two Koreans playing against each other, really good players. I'm excited to see it. And identical 3-0 results from the semifinals, uh, showing the strength of those going into the grand finals. But both of these players will really be looking for redemption, considering they didn't win a single match in their respective semifinals. Yeah, they're hurting. Their 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 tuckuses are hurting. They're 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 wanting some uh, some prizes here. Keep in mind, everybody who's left in the tournament at this point will be winning some amount of cash. Uh, fourth place gets at least a hundred dollars. So uh, they're secured in their winnings. They're just trying to earn a little bit more in this third place. And yeah, Happy Joe, as we've seen him, we've seen him on stream, I think, three times now, uh, favoring red in each of his decks. Yeah, a very red heavy lineup, not actually running uh, almost any blue. And the, the one deck that does have blue in it is now banned out by Rundong. Whereas Happy Joe goes to ban out the uh, card down in the bottom corner that's showing the priest. Uh, the new card released in part two of Resurgence, so I would guess that would uh, main, uh, maybe be leaning towards a Rakoan style deck. Yeah, Priest of, uh, Priest of Everlife there, or um, it was the new one, right? Uh, the uh, yes, the one that gives the okay. the buff. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would like to have seen that, but uh, I guess it's banned now. And uh, we're gonna go with uh, Green Red Crackthorn for Happy Joe versus Rundong's. I believe this is just gonna be a red. Uh, what do you want to call it? Combat mid-range deck? Yeah, it definitely lends itself to be more of the mid-range style. Silent Horse Master in there gives that, that red the extra mobility that it really lacks. And then you have all of these control tools in there. So with, with the Double Cipher's Wrath and now seeing an Axe Grinder open from Happy Joe, Rundung will be really looking to pick up uh, a Ground Shaker. But now seeing Fire Elemental, I wonder if this is more of uh, an angry red. That would be interesting to see. We haven't seen that uh, and well, I don't think actually, I don't think I've actually seen a, a run dog match. I wasn't able to watch uh, the other semifinal, so it could be. Yeah, we could see some firebringers, uh, hate seeds, things like that. But fire mental by itself is also good just for ramping up some land and getting red to where it needs to be to play things like maybe he runs Baldurian, things like. Yeah, exactly. Getting to that that five uh, mountain requirement, Baldurian, like you mentioned, of course, havoc being the big removal for red, um, a big single target removal for red. Uh, it definitely needs to ramp up as quick as possible. And it allows you to do something like this, where Rundong goes for the double neutrals on two consecutive turns and still gets an aggressive mountain very early on in the game. Yeah, this is looking more and more like an angry red. I'm sure we'll see some X grinders come out. He's already got the mountain position for it. Um, he's able to harvest next turn uh, with the Fire Elemental, unless Happy Joe chooses to use a Flame Burst, uh, which of course... You normally want to save that for a beefier creature or use a Cypher's Wrath, but he may have no choice here. Another Axe Grinder picked up. Uh, does give Happy Joe something to play on this turn. Could just go for a Forest and, and wait a turn, see what Rundong plays, and then respond in that way. Uh, not really under any threat at this current point because the Fire Elemental is so far back. Even though we can see the, the Horse Master in Rundong's hand, it still doesn't immediately impact anything for a couple turns. Fire Elemental is going to have to get into a better position. It can get up the board, but that still doesn't represent actually dealing damage uh, over the next couple turns. But Happy Joe still sees it as enough of a threat and does go for that Flame Burst like you mentioned. There's a Recoilcopter. Not the best uh, creature to draw off the top you want something man you would love an axe grinder right now oh only gets a leia that's ooh, cannot play anything passes his turn immediately run down with an empty turn and happy joe heart yeah that is a difficulty of going for a draw so early on in the game sometimes you hit a creature that you can't meet the land requirements for yet so run down getting not necessarily punished, but a little little sad in that situation because he went for extending land so early, now doesn't meet the land requirements to actually play out his creatures. Oh, and another Cypher's Wrath. That means he has to choose to draw again. And if he does, he can't play any creature. So yeah, he's just going to make a mountain this turn so we can at least drop a, a Leia and guarantee some sort of um, fair harvesting next turn. Well, not guarantee, but hopefully. 
Yeah, a little rough now for Happy Joe because he doesn't have the extra forest. Went for that mountain off to the right of his own orb. Now, I believe was set up just as a bomb slinger land. Uh, I, I originally thought after the flame burst he would go for the axe grinder over there to contest creatures, but looks like it was just set up for the eventual bomb slingers. And now uh, having to wait actually for more forest to be able to attempt to clear Leia through like a deep wood soccer play. He gets the Cypher, drops it near the orb. This is what he wanted a couple turns ago, um, but still, nonetheless, Cypher's a good play. Uh, also drew another Fire Elemental. Those are going to uh, lower in value over time. But now, to answer this Cypher, Happy Joe has 16 Faria, so a Bomb Slinger Flame Burst combo would do that pretty quick. Very similar to the way that Happy Joe played this uh Crackthorn deck earlier against Shay Hollick, just saving up Faria in the early game, waiting for a potential big swing. Uh, it was very interesting to see really how slow he was playing with it because sometimes Crackthorn can be a very aggressive deck, and sometimes you just have all of these control tools where you're just waiting for your opponent to do something so you can respond to it. Yep, and covering up that aggressive mountain with the Sagami Warrior leaves Rundong with limited options. Another Fire Elemental. Man, I gotta say, Rundong's draws, not so great this game. And, and this happens a lot when you play an aggressive deck with a specific plant that needs to do a specific thing. Um, you know, in this case, which is get your lands up next to your opponent's orb and start dropping things next to the next to the face. Well, when the draws come out like this, it makes it very difficult. Rokocopter is a nice little drop here, and you can follow it up with a Cypher's Wrath and do a little clearing. Um, still no Axe Grinder in hand. He would love uh, to be able to play those uh, soon, but down to zero Feria. Leia's in the back harvesting. Meanwhile, Happy Joe double harvesting in the left. Yeah, like you mentioned briefly with the Fire Elementals, they're losing value through the later game. I actually really thought that more Control Red would start running something like the uh, Ign Ignis Ritualist of course, gives you the same potential of creating extra lands in the mid game, where later on in the game, you can use your power wheel for other things instead of the fire elemental, which is only creating a land every single time. So interesting to see Rundong uh, running the fire elementals in there if it is just for extending lands. Yeah, and so much fairy, he can just play a deep wood stalker, follow it up with a ground shaker, clear off the rocoacopter, leave uh, Leia within flame burst range if you ever were to draw one crack thorns are still to come he's almost up to the threshold for that there is the first axe grinder for uh rundong but unfortunately now there's a ground shaker staring it down so uh it's still probably worth playing it then you can follow it up with a cypher's wrath what you don't want to happen is to play your axe grinder and then deep wood stalker run into it and follow it up with uh cyphers or something like that so he chooses not to play it sitting on his feria that allows happy joe to triple collect yeah, and like you mentioned, that Axe Grinder just doing work on the far side of the board right now, double collecting every single turn where Rundong is really limited to that top corner well. He's only got that one guaranteed single collection, and both players really fighting for positioning over the bottom right. Now that Happy Joe has established his creatures, he's triple collecting, and he's just going to continue to extend a board advantage. Uh, big thing for him in this situation is finding something like a Crack Thorn, something to actually push an advantage. Whereas Rundong going for uh, playing nothing that turn, you're really just making Happy Joe wonder what does he have in hand that he's not playing. Right, and, and but um, and on the opposite side, Rundong is thinking, man, how do I break through these units? A double neutral there. Wow, I really like that play. Uh, and of course, there's the final flame burst. Oh, and you know what? That shimmering statue is such an annoyance to Rundong, even though it does give him that health he can no longer harvest from that well uh in that position he'll have to make a mountain if he wants to start harvesting from there so rundong being starved right now out of fairy he does have a garadan but uh you know garadan doesn't take care of the ground shaker and he can't even play it for another turn i think rundong has a really good line here of uh, a mountain and then developing fire elemental between the wells and then creating the second mountain also between the wells. So you block any type of bomb slinger play from your opponent. Uh, the only thing they could have would be a Flamers or Cypher's Wrath from the hand. That would take Rundong down to four Feria. 
if he double col if it survives and he double collects, he would go up to nine and then could plus one into Garadin next turn. Uh, going for a, a somewhat similar line here with the Axe Grinder. Currently looks like it's going to trade into the Ground Shaker and then set up for a plus one Garadin. But I think that was a really interesting position that uh, Rundong could have taken between the wells. Yeah, you're right. And and because Happy Joe has so much land, uh, neutral land here, he can pretty much put a bomb slinger wherever he wants, no matter what Rundong drops. And that's the reason he's making all those neutrals, is just to get that uh, territory to, to drop his bomb slingers to continue to control the board. I mean, you can see here, and how many turns has Happy Joe been triple harvesting? Uh, you know, when Rundong has been locked out. So, you know, that's going to tell the story of the game. The longer this goes on, the worse Rundong is off. And when he's playing an aggressive deck, or at least a more aggressive deck than Happy Joe is playing, and this is happening, this is not where you want to be. Yeah, I think Happy Joe reading into the Garadin as well, uh, wanting to play the Horse Master and get the Ground Shaker moving up the board. Um doesn't necessarily need to clear off the Shimmering Statue right now, but it at least moves the Ground Shaker up into a more aggressive position. It just then potentially opens him up to uh, the G Garadin being played where the Ground Shaker currently is, and it would be out of range of Happy Joe immediately dealing with it. So he's just really, uh, I think, struggling in this situation to find where the best opening is and just decides to not play anything. Yep, just holding on to everything. Rundung now with an opportunity. Nine fairy. To... Uh, we've got an underground underground brigand he can drop to start uh, some sort of harvesting. He can make a mountain right below his shimmering statue. Once again, it's just such. It's really awkward for Rundung now because. Happy Joe has the resources and the board control to play as slow as he wants in this situation. And you're just making your opponent make the first move. And anything that Rundong does looks like it's not going to pan out uh, well for him. So many cards in Rundong's hand. He's just been unable to play the right thing at the right time. He's not getting what he wants. And yeah, just, just forced to make a mountain here, at least in the double harvest position, that's something. Uh, and the important thing also is that it's away from the bomb slinger um, line of sight, so that's great. Happy Joe actually has no way to kill the brigand, if, even if he's a stalker and finds a follow up, that's at least going to give Rundong some feria. So, looking a little bit better now for him. But how many turns is it now? I mean, I have to keep saying it. <laughs> and of course, it looked like it was at a bomb slinger range now with the grounds. Now yeah, exactly. So this is what I was talking about with the Fire Elemental line that I was mentioning a few turns back. Because Rundong would have been able to set up the Fire Elemental and the extra mountain could have come down, it would have actually been protected from that bomb slinger. Whereas this line, when he goes for the Brigand, Happy Joe is able to respond with that opening up that bomb slinger line. Uh, Ground Shaker does survive, so as long as Happy Joe can find a way to efficiently deal with this Garadin, he will continue to have board advantage. But at least for now, Rundong has set himself up in a position where he at least has some way to potentially come back into the game. He pulled the trigger on his largest bullet. Garadin is on the field, and he has to make the most of it. This Garadin has to do a lot of work. Uh, maybe you'll be able to double harvest on the left side somehow. Uh, the removal in Rundong's hand is not uh, great for a ground trigger. It specifically, it doesn't have a flame burst. So, you know, Cypher's Wrath can clear up the Horse Master. He could try to start some double harvesting and start coming back. The problem is there's a Leia now defensively played for Happy Joe. So any kind of aggression he would launch uh, would be shut down pretty quickly. Bomb Slinger can take care of that. There's actually a lot of, a few options here. Uh, Bomb Slinger is one of them. But, um, if he does not cipher his wrath, the horse master, he opens himself up to a flame burst clear on his garret, and I don't think he wants that. Yeah, exactly. The The Cypher's Wrath is so good here. Uh, like I mentioned, as long as Happy Joe could clear the Garadin, he continu continues to have board advantage. Now Rundong has opened up a window. Garadin, of course, being a 6-6, a, a very strong body onto the board to take trades, but because it has the flying in charge too, Rundung is setting himself up for a position where he can actually start to collect his way back into the game. Uh, if he's able to have this Garadin double collect next turn and still have resources out of hand to clear Happy Joe's creatures, and then double collect on the following turn and start putting his own 
uh, more creatures back onto the board, this is how Rundong can start to get back in the game. We, of course, can see that Crackthorn probably will come down this turn for Happy Joe, and then it really depends on where the buffs land, how quickly he's able to push an advantage. But Rundong has now opened himself up uh, to find a way back. Yep, if there's any chance, it's now. He's had a tough time all throughout the early game. In fact, Happy Joe is now in the uh, the aggressive stance as uh, the more late game green red crackthorn deck so it's not whatever happy joe does it's not going to be great looks like crackthorn is coming out this turn uh he'd love it to land on that ground shaker a few times and actually okay oh almost every yeah every hit on the garadan i think um and yeah not bad rolls there at all crackthorn in place to reserve the spot for the ground shaker that's 11 damage and oh my goodness because so many hits on the garadan deep wood stalker can clear it off yeah, fantastic there uh, for Happy Joe in a few different ways. Of course, you mentioned that the Garadin takes all the damage, so that sets up the clear with the Deepwood Stalker. But a big thing here, because of the dash of Crackthorn, the 6-4 Ground Shaker would very easily be able to die to a Bomb Slinger. The Crackthorn dash blocks that. And the Crackthorn buffed itself enough that it doesn't even die to a Bomb Slinger. So really big... Uh, getting the spread in the right ways for a lot of things to go right there for Happy Joe. Let's explode Having to spend Emperor's Command plus a Bomb Slayer to clear off that Crackthorn. There's another Crackthorn drawn. Now there's a high chance if this Crackthorn is played, this Bomb Slinger is destroyed. And in fact, that seems to be the thing to do. Here it comes. He's moving the Ground Shaker forward. And yes, that was a very good chance for that Bomb Slinger to be hit. 11 damage once again through uh, next to face and even more now, 13 through his guidance. That's lethal next turn. Yeah, a little disappointing there that the Ground Shaker doesn't pick up a couple more buffs and deal a little more damage on that turn. But like you mentioned, it's another creature in behind as a reinforcement, more than enough to end the game on the following turn. And uh, Rundung, really on those early turns, had, had gone for that draw and didn't find a creature to play, and that set him behind. And then uh, I think going for that Fire Elemental line between the wells could have potentially been a little bit of a comeback to set up for a Garadin, but you never really know in that situation. Uh, Happy Joe very easily could have had a card in hand that counters that and just played out the game super slow until he got to his Crackthorns. And now Rundong has to choose what would I like to play against Crackthorn. He's going to go with blue. Uh, looks like a blue jump of some sort. I would imagine his other choice would be uh, green-blue. Uh, so we're going to see possibly some animated banquets flying around. Um, some Tritons, I imagine, versus this Crackthorn. Yeah, it definitely is a deck that can take uh, a game against Crackthorn very quickly because you have extra mobility to start out collecting them. You have uh, either the buffs or the debuffs of, of the control tools to take early trades. Just really depends on if your opponent is able to get some value out of things like the Garadin that we see in Happy Joe's hand or find the right value swings back with something like Cypher's Wraths uh, or the right positioning for Bomb Slinger. So there's a lot of uh, very big positioning uh, things that we'll have to keep an eye on throughout the course of this game. Yeah, turn one animated banquet on the first player's turn means that it will survive at least for two turns until the Deepwood Stalker uh, gets into business. He has a Triton Trainer or Water Elemental Follow-up. So a really good early game for Rundonk here. It's a completely different story from uh, game one where he had just had uh, just the first like the first turn was great I guess he had the, the first couple turns were great but after that he just fell off really quickly this looks like a strong hand that can carry him uh, pretty far yeah definitely a good start for uh, really a good start for both players here Happy Joe has the land ramp in the elemental as well as the deep wood stalker potentially could clear off the animated banquet but rundong able to get a really nice start with the water elemental extended the lands of his own and get the animated banquet buff rolling early i am both players really nicely setting up early collections so uh, really going to come down to whatever uh, whoever makes the first move towards the other happy joe just wanting to set up that collection as much as possible a significant difference being here that Happy Joe is doing the defensive double harvest from your own wells land placements while Rundong is moving up the right side, which is more of a mid-range play. So Rundong recognizes he can't uh, sit back 
and do the same thing as Happy Joe is doing because his deck in the long run will probably not win out that way. His deck is going to be very strong in the mid range, but in the very late game when crack thorns start coming down, you know, it's just not going to work out so well. So yeah, contesting the right side here is the right thing to do. Uh, he can uh, drop a Triton Trainer this turn, which is while it's low health and vulnerable, it'll set up uh, the next banquet he plays to be a little bit stronger. He's got a Frogify in the pocket as well. Yeah, Rundown looks set up pretty well to be able to uh, start the snowball rolling in his direction. Like you mentioned, could go for the Triton Trainer there. It could have gone Triton Trainer and the banquet down so it would be a 4-3 with jump and reinforce the water elemental and then of course both of the animated banquets will uh, spawn and continue to get those buffs going and the Triton Trainer would get the uh, plus one onto the next creature that you play you just really snowball an advantage um, big thing for Happy Joe really like going for the Axe Grinder far side here we saw how much work that did for him in the last game and blue jump really specializes around the lands that it's already created so if Happy Joe continues to move this Axe Grinder into a, a more double collection style uh, positioning, which it looks like he's going to go for, then Rundung has to make a decision at some point of continuing to push up the right side and being more and more aggressive versus actually going to clear the Axe Grinder and trying to shut down your opponent's economy. Yep, and it all come down to the conflict that's about to happen in the lower right as the lands meet. Happy Joe is fine for that to take as long as Rundong wants to work. So yeah, I think we're going to see... I think we will see a banquet come down, like you're talking about, with this trainer, and that will be a 3-3 banquet, but it gets gobbled right back up by that frog, puts in a 3 uh, health, which means a flame burst clears him, but that's fine. Uh, Rundong expects something like that, and he has a 3-3 uh, three, three afterwards that he can have something else. It's a really nice setup by Rundong as well here because normally you would have the Water Elemental set up to trade into the uh, Wood Elemental. It's left as a 4-2 and it potentially gets cleared by something like a Cypher's Wrath or uh, because Happy Joe has so many resources, maybe Rundong is reading into a Garrodon in hand. However, getting the 4-3 of the, the Triton Trainer means a more efficient trade into the, the Wood Elemental, leaving your Water Elemental at a 4-4 and more protected from a, a potential Garrodon coming down. Oh, wait a minute. Forbidden Library in this deck. That's not something I was expecting. This is... He does have enough lands to play it as well, so... This is the perfect time to play that. You know, there's... Happy Joe is in no position to deal with a Forbidden Library other than the Flame Burst in his hand. So you could play that back, uh, start uh, drawing, and uh, I wonder if there's... There should not be Dream Reavers in this deck, I'd imagine. I don't think so. I I, I believe the average cost was only 4.1 when uh, we were looking at each player's deck's uh, selection screen. So that, I don't think, uh, to me, lends itself towards a Dream Reaver type list. Um, I think potentially just very similar to uh, the way that we saw Tale of the Old Turtle being run in a, a blue jump earlier on in the day. It is just a deck that needs a little more card draw, needs a little extra oomph in certain matchups. And Rundong choosing to run Frogifies means he has more events and can't run Tail of the Old Turtle for the same value. So he's choosing to run uh, Forbidden Libraries instead. And I really like the choice to use the Triton Trainer there to clear the Water Elemental, or I'm sorry, the Earth Elemental, so that uh, he doesn't lower the health of his creatures all to three, protecting against that. Garadan, he's fine if the Triton Trainer dies. He expects it to. You always do when you have a one or two health creature. And in fact, here's the flame burst on the Forbidden Library, so it never got the draw, but that's still a two fairy win. Uh, Happy Joe just not kind of having the right things in hand right now. Garadan would be fantastic, uh, and then set up into Double Deep Wood Stalker to clear off the banquets. But uh, right now, if you go Garadan, it actually doesn't do that much. It clears off the Triton Trainer, but doesn't clear off the banquet left in behind. So it looks like Happy Joe's just actually going to Leia and try to wait it out. Aurora Drawn, that's a really great card to have when you want to preemptively buff against a Garanin. Um, you can, in fact, even clear Leia right here, the statue she leaves, and then Aurora uh, back up from one health. Oh, instead, he's just going to trade, uh, surrender that... Uh, creature entirely and now well, he can play something like a train leia does have death touch so you can't exactly value trade into oh oh yeah it'd be <laughs> very difficult to get enough stats to survive a leia. So, 
Trident Warrior much better here. That's going to make him a 5-5. Five, five. And that's 9 damage next to face. And there's actually 10 damage. And there's actually no great way to deal with that for Happy Joe. Yeah, Crackthorn now coming out. Uh, the 4 damage pings really isn't going to be enough when there's 10 life on the board and the potential that some of those could go uh, into Rundong's orb. Um, it might be a situation where Happy Joe has to Garrett in here in an more kind of aggressive positioning and then hope he can get a crackthorn down next turn and, and start a race but you're already looking down 10 damage to your orb which means your opponent can finish you in two turns yeah you're gonna have to force you're gonna force yourself to play that garrett and use the stalker follow maybe even uh crackthorn let's see no he can't yeah he cannot crackthorn he's one short of the crackthorn so it has to be the garrett and deepwood stalker to clear anything at all and even then only the water a month ago is cleared and even then uh there's an animated banquet left yeah and i mean the plus one could be an option where you garrett and, and double deep wood stalker but the fact is the water elemental is blocking your other forest right now so yeah, yeah he can only play one spider exactly that, that it's blocked um for the second deep wood stalker so not a not a lot of great options here for happy joe and oh. and hits the face too many times that's very disappointing to see. Uh, so many damage pings onto the orb here. Doesn't deal that much damage onto any of the creatures to set up for a Garrett next turn, uh, which kind of looked like that's what he was going for. Rundung potentially goes for the, the Frogify that's in hand here, and Happy Joe was hoping to bait that out. But it really looks like you just swing for the orb and you know maybe don't even care about what your opponent has here. Yeah, man, Th that was just a really unfortunate crackthorn. There's a lot. There's a high chance it'll at least hit creatures a, a couple like times. Here comes the Aurora. That's going to clear off the crackthorn, leave behind a banquet. He can ooh and drop a Tide Lord and then swallow that. Fantastic play out of Rundong there to find that uh, combination. Saving the Frogify, saving that removal uh, for a potential bigger threat when you have a way right now to clear off uh, your opponent's threat that's there. Also really like that uh, Rundung doesn't go for the trade there. Very easily could have jumped his Triton Warrior off and killed the Axe Grinder in that position because uh, that would have stopped your opponent from double collecting next turn. But Happy Joe still had such a massive Faria Pool that it doesn't really limit your opponent's options. Uh, if Happy Joe was at something uh, of a, a low fairy pool like one or two then the double collection really matters uh, but in this situation he already had nine at the, at the start of the turn so uh, denying that type of resource really doesn't achieve the same thing yeah a ground shaker can, can clear up a double harvester like we're talking about but how are you going to stop the damage that's going to destroy you and actually make you lose the game 13 damage your only option is yeah dropping double deep ones but he's in the same position as he was before so healing is the only way he feels safe about surviving because there is only one damage away uh from lethal of course we know that run dog does not have it in hand but there could be yeah anything drawn uh, it turns out it's not but still next turn same same situation yeah i don't know that a deck like this would actually run any other kind of buffs uh, Aurora p potentially would be the only one, and both of your creatures have at least six attack, and Aurora, of course, also died, but the fact that they're both banqueted up already, um, I don't know that there would have been a plus one buff that could have come out, but Happy Joe going for the healing there just in case, and another banquet play coming out by Rundong, just so expertly dodged around all of the things that Happy Joe could have done to clear his creatures this game. These Tide Lords are just so strong. Um, you know, 6-6 six, six for 5. That's just it. Sweeping it up. Rundong taking the win. Happy Joe knew there was nothing he could do against all those frogs. And now we're at 1-1 one, one in this best of 5. Yeah, really nice back and forth there of uh, finding a, a kind of a proper counter deck there. The Blue's just able to get on to Happy Joe so quickly in that game. Happy Joe. On to his next deck. His options are going to be red yellow or just that mono that we saw this red rush deck earlier. And that's what he's going to go. Ooh, 
Yep, that is the one that he locks in, so uh, definitely going to be looking for something like the, the Queen's Guard start. Um, and then Rundong going to be looking for something like an early Frogify, early Aurora, and try to swing the board back the, in his favor. Or you're looking for something like a Battle Toad so that you can get out onto the wells and collect so that you have enough Feria to reinforce your creatures after the early trades. Yeah, this is very similar to a matchup we saw earlier. Yeah, it was this it was this red rush deck versus a blue deck with yeah, an Aurora came out, there were Triton Warriors. Now it's a little bit different here. He's opening with a Tide Lord, and of course you cannot open with Tide Lord, so his only starting play is the Battle Toads and Talea. Meanwhile, Queen's Guard has an open path to the Yeah, if it's a, a Battletoad start here for Rundong, try to get that collection going. It'll be interesting if Happy Joe goes to clear one of them or does just swing for the orb uh, because you kind of want to get a little value before your opponent's able to do something like playing Aurora. Uh, that also sets potentially up for a decent Axe Grinder position if Happy Joe wants to go to the left or to the right and clear off uh, one of the Battletoads rather than going straight for the orb here. Yeah, he definitely wants a mountain uh, to start working on his mountains so he can play that Cypher's next turn. Ooh, I wonder if he's going to do exactly what you're saying. Is he going to clear that Harvesting Battle Toad? So Rundong is forced forced to make another land in order to harvest at all. And that's exactly what he's doing, and I don't mind that at all. Yeah, and a really smart going for this left side one because... One, it's quicker at getting in between the wells. Uh, Rundong could go for a double neutral, and then it's already in a, a double collection position. But secondly, Rundong has to create a land off to the right side if he wants this battle toad to actually collect on this turn, which means that should leave the land exposed for Happy Joe to create the uh, axe grinder position on the following turn. Now, fantastic top deck for Rundong mm. here. Picks up that Aurora that we were oh, talking about. Perfect timing for Aurora. There is no great answer for Happy Joe either. He has no Flame Burst, which is really what we want in this situation. To clear this, to clear this he has to spend a Cypher's and an Emperor's Command. That's four fairy two cards. Afterwards, he... Uh, ooh, he actually... Well, he could play the Axe Grinder afterwards as a follow-up, but that is just a really good uh, turn for Rundog there. Yeah, I... I think the Grimguard pickup kind of changes from going for the Axe Grinder position to now going for a Grimguard right beside Aurora. Uh, looks like he's going to do it right in front of the orb as well, but uh, like you mentioned, there is that Emperor's Command Cypher's Wrath play to clear off the 6-3. Oh, he's going to clear Aurora instead and hope that the Battletoad trades in with uh, the Axe Grinder. That's, that's a good way to force your opponent to make the choice. Do you want to harvest now or do you want to clear my unit? He clearly is fine with uh, Happy Joe is fine with him clearing the Axe Grinder. Um, you know, it, it puts the choice in your opponent's hand. Uh, getting rid of the Harvest uh, is important when you want to keep things on an even playing field and continue trading with your opponent. Tide Lord comes out before he makes the trade here. It looks yeah, fantastic one there. Uh, positioning is so key for that type of play from Rondong because getting it in the middle gives it full range of the board right now. It, depending on what the creature is that Happy Joe plays, the Tide Lord can go and contest it. If it's no creature that comes out from Happy Joe because he's waiting for some type of setup, uh, then he can go directly for the orb and, and start putting Happy Joe on a clock. And yeah, I mean, you're the one being aggressive, and now with this Tide Lord, uh, you're on the other side of the coin here. Tide Lord down to four after that Emperor's Command, so he respected it enough to um, fear the clock of the Tide Lord. This also means Tide Lord cannot clear the Grim Guard in one hit. Aurora's trick onto the Grim Guard, and that is devastating. Yeah, that may actually just be the game right there, because uh, Rundong is now in a position where he's winning the race. He also has a defensive creature which burns his opponent, and he took control of Happy Joe's only creature. So it's just a, such a massive swing in terms of what that creature represented for Happy Joe for Run Rundong to take it with the Aurora's Trek. He can even frogify this turn, get rid of that Grimguard, continue hitting the face. Yeah, he's putting his Grimguard in the harvesting position. This is just going to get out of control. Oh, he even clears the frog just to stop any kind of harvesting because he's in no rush to win. 
Yeah, right now for Rundong, it's it's just control. Uh, going for the clear there just means if he's able to collect next turn, he can play another Tide Lord down and do even more dam represent even more damage to the orb. Uh, you're really limiting what Happy Joe can do here. If you leave that battle toad alive, Happy Joe could potentially put it in between the wells and get the double collection that really reinforces. Uh, one of the things for a red rush style, uh, the combat rush is a little different, but red rush generally runs things that are all their creatures are kind of in the four cost. You of course have your six cost of Queen's Guard, and then all the support tools are, are about two, or Flame Burst being three Faria. So collection is very important, or at least having creatures that get the combat trigger down. Um, but if you're able to set up on a well and get that collection every single turn, it's massive for the potential that Red can actually uh, do. Rundong, even able. Oh, <laughs> that's it. He just sweeps it up. I was just about to say, those Tritons are just able to cover the lands of his opponent, making it so he can't even defend. That Aurora's trick on that Grimguard. Man, when your opponent's at five lakes and you drop a Grim Grimguard, you know, sometimes you're doing a little roll with that. Yeah, very much look like a tech choice just because you are going to that five lakes. Um, Rundong just playing it out really well. And we are in game three of this best of five. This could be the final game of the match. We'll have to wait and see if Rundong can pull out the victory here. In the meantime, Happy Joe switching to his red yellow deck. Yeah, red yellow burn. Uh, still looking at kind of the same strategy as, as the previous game. You have all of these creatures that just want to fight. And then you have the red control tools that are going to be the extra damage pickoffs to everything. But Rundong start with the animated banquet again into another creature just means he's going to start that value train rolling. And without a creature in hand for Happy Joe, it's going to be very difficult for him to catch back up. And this animated banquet just barely escapes the Cypher's Wrath. Bloated Toad comes down. That's a powerful combo. When Once again, the enemy banquet will cancel out the last words of the Bloated Toad. So after that 4-4 dies, there is a 2-2 uh, coming up. It only costs one. And so early game, that's really, really strong. Happy Joe going to the opposite side this time uh, instead of going to the same side. Of course, because Rundong is already on the board and his creatures have jump, he's probably going to be able to dictate trades whenever Happy Joe does find a creature. So wanting to avoid that as much as possible, moving off to the far side for whenever he gets a creature down and then use these uh, tools from hand to try to control the board a little more. But it's really looking bleak if Happy Joe doesn't draw a creature on this turn. Bravely dropping out a train trainer there. You're definitely going to get Cypher's Wrath off there, but he's expecting things like that to happen. As the turns go on, Rundong will be double harvesting off that right side once he makes his next lake. Be able to put down Tide Lords in two turns, and Happy Joe's going to have to find some answers to that. Right now, he just has removal. He has a Gift of Steel can't play. He does have a Garadan, but not a very good Garadan right now. No, but it is a very good Garadan next turn, depending on what Rundong plays. So if Happy Joe just goes for another mountain right now, doesn't play anything else, he'll have 14 Faria to use next turn, which is perfectly Garadan Cypher Cyphers. And that could either clear the Bloated Toad and the Banquet, or potentially another creature that's played. If it's the Triton Warrior that comes down, it's kind of perfect for that as well. Uh, Happy Joe going for the Explore on this turn means he's going to set up Garadan on the opposing well. And we'll have to see if Rundong reads that that's the play or if he and doesn't play any creature or if he's going to play something down this turn. I think he's thinking about the Triton Warrior. Happy Joe certainly wants something to happen or he wants to draw a creature he can play. He either wants to be able to react to something or draw something he can put on the board and, and, and make things happen. And yeah, Sunken Tower, even if it's played, Garadan can't uh, reach that. A really smart movement here by Rundung, though. Uh, just moving that land means that Happy Joe can't get Garadan where he wants it onto the well, meaning it won't be able to hit the orb on the following turn. So it might have to be a, a little bit of a reset here from Happy Joe where he plays Garadan directly in front of his own orb to then set up for either collection or... Uh, potentially going for a, a creature clear, but looks like he is just going to continue with the game plan of aggressive Garadan. 
That was a really smart, like you're saying, sunken tower move um, by Rondong. Animated Banquet is even cleared off, and Happy Joe spends absolutely every drop of his feria to clear the board other than the uh, Big thing here, though, is that, again, Sunken Tower can move Garrodon into an awkward spot where it can't collect, it can't hit the orb, and it can't contest. Another lake down in the bottom means Rundog can go Triton Warrior, which will get buffed by the Triton Trainer up to a 5-5. And Tide Lord in behind, which will be a 6 6, representing 11 potential damage co going to the orb and just trying to end the game before Happy Joe does. Yeah, that's a lot. And, you know, Happy Joe just spent just about everything he had. He's in, like you said, an awkward position. He can only harvest once with his Garden. It's not really what you want. He can't even reach any of these creatures. He has no flash winds, nothing uh, from the yellow side of his deck to really help him out here. Finally draws a Sheet and Brute, but in order to play him, he'll have to. Harvest once, plus one, and drop, and that's all he can do. Meanwhile, 11 damage is coming to face, so you're kind of darned if you do, darned if you don't. Uh, if Garrodin's able to swing, so Happy Joe has to find a way to end the game on the next turn, because it doesn't look like he's going to be able to move anything into the right ways to actually clear off these creatures. Can't go for something like the plus one Shed and Root because it dies so easily, but if he moves Garrodon directly up into the top corner and it is able to attack the orb, he does have an extra nine damage in hand right now between the Gift of Steels and the Flame Burst. I just don't think he ever gets there to actually be able to play it. Yeah, having no real choice but to play the Brute defensively. This doesn't mean the Tide Lord can clear it off easily. The Triton Warrior can follow up. Another Sunken Tower drawn. That's not uh, too great right now for Rundong. He'd like something <laughs> a little bit better, and he has to make he, a He actually could go for a very interesting of move the mountain under Garrodon, and then move the mountain uh, potentially either back a space in between the wells or just back to its current position. And then oh, you still put Garrodon in a really awkward spot again. It's like slipping a tablecloth under Garrodon and then pulling him away. That would be pretty funny to see. I can't imagine he would do that over just... Uh, I mean, you could even draw here and use the existing Sunken Tower to without making a land and still hit face for five. And then draw. maybe you draw something that even helps you out more than that. I guess, though. I guess, yeah. I, maybe Double Sunken Tower is the right play. It looks like it is to me, because you again put it in that awkward position where it can't clear any of your creatures, it can't clear, uh, it can't collect in the right way, it can't hit the orb, uh, he's not going to go for it now with that type of a clear, but just Battletoads I guess in behind so Garrodon can't swing for the face. Well, I'm surprised he didn't make that other Battletoads, oh okay, next to face, I guess that makes more sense when you're trying to end it, there is 11-13 damage, uh, facing down Happy Joe, but of course he can deal with some of it at least. So I guess I guess the Flame Burst on the title here is, is the obvious thing to do, and that's really all you can't... Oh! Okay, let's go face! Ooh, yeah, what am I talking about? <laughs> the face would have been enough... Um... Or, or sorry, would be enough because he has the Gift of Steel in hand. Next turn can play that onto Garrett and, and, and just swing for nine. Mirror Phantasm would be great for Rundong, but doesn't have the Feria to play it. Yeah, it would be lethal if he only had one more. I I don't see any way that he can... I, I guess you have to bring your Tide Lord back now. Uh, you can play a land and use the Sunken Tower to move either the Tide Lord or the land that Garrodon is on. Uh, or the land that, yeah, the Tide Lord jumps to, and that's what he's going to go for. Man, that was so close. Both players just almost lost the game. Like, it was it was one very off. Um, but there you go, Garrodon is cleared off by the Tide Lord. There's still seven damage next to face. That's nothing to sneeze at. And yeah, your Phantasm in hand is now playable next turn, and that is lethal. Yeah, and that looks uh, for now like it's going to be game for Rundong, but Happy Joe could potentially draw into uh, like a Cypher's Wrath and clear off the, the Battle Toad, but that still doesn't deal with the 5 5 Triton Warrior, uh, potentially killing him on the following turn. So looks like Rundong's going to be able to seal this out. It's just a matter of whether it's on the next turn or uh, potentially a couple turns down the line. Yeah, no removal, no taunt. Nothing in hand is going to stop you from losing this game right now. Of course, he can't predict 
that there is a mirror phantasm or any kind of buff, but he assumes, I suppose, even without lethal on the board, I'm surprised he would surrender like that. Um, and that gives Rundong the series. That's it. In this best of five, Rundong takes third place, and that's $400. And Happy Joe gets 100 himself. But um, Yeah, really well played out series as well. Yeah, oh, it's great. Yeah, these two Korean players, I'm sure they uh, encounter each other a lot. I, I bet they share strategies uh, of all kinds. And and in this case, Run Dong taking third place in the Column Seasonal Cup. Congratulations to him. And congratulations to Happy Joe. He's done really well. And, of course, wins a prize. So with that, there's only one match left. And guess what? It's a best of seven. That's right. We've been playing best of five this entire time. The grand finals will be a best of seven versus the with the two German players, Teddy, who is undefeated this tournament, who has uh, won the past two cash tournaments, the past two Cypher Opens, versus Super Blizzard, who is also a German and hasn't really had the, doesn't really have, I guess you'd call it the pedigree of Teddy as far as tournament finishes, but, finishes, but nonetheless, uh, he has done really well in this tournament. So the grand final should be really nice to watch. We are going to set up for that. Uh, in the meantime, hope you enjoy all the stream prizes. Um, thank you for continuing to watch. We have the grand finale coming up. <laughs> 